Good morning, Old High Virtual Families. It's Miss Lyons here, and I wanted to do a special recording and give you some updates on some things since parent-teacher conferences are this week. Um, first of all, I wanted to tell you congratulations on five weeks of something we have never ever done before. We have been building the plane in the air as we're flying, but the good news is it took flight. We are safe in our seats and getting to our destination. But there's a little turbulence, there's a little turbulence, but still we're doing a good job. So last week the teachers and I met together and we did kind of a systems analysis of where are we at in relationship to our expectations, where are we? And what we decided is while we are doing good. We still haven't yet met our expectations for ourselves. Um, and we kind of went through what could help us and what would make a difference. So um, we're going to, I want to talk to you about those because you're having parent teacher conferences this week and you might hear some of these things come up, but I wanted to give you an overall general blanket um, heads up. Number one, more than ever before. This system, this virtual school system, insists that we be hand in hand, in tandem, synchronous, step by step with teachers and parents. You're on the same team. Both of you obviously want the same things. Teachers and parents want the same exact thing. We want our kids to be growing and we want our kids to be successful. The teachers want exactly that same thing that you want for your student. So here's the deal. Welcome to the team. You're honorary members of the old high staff. But don't worry, I'm a pretty good boss. I'm pretty, I mean, ask around, but I'm decent at being a boss. So it'll be okay. And we've already been working together. We've had lots of phone calls and emails, and I think we're off to a good start. But I did want to let you know, officially, you are an honorary staff member because there's some things that we can't do um, virtually. We used to be able to do them when um, everyone was here. But in this virtual world, it's hard for us to do some of the things that we're used to being able to do. So we did discuss some of our control issues, but we do need your help. And we're going to discuss some of those things. Um, we, frankly, we couldn't ask for a better set of parents to be on this journey with us. So thank you for joining in. Thank you for wanting the same things we want for your kids. And I think that you guys can do it. I wouldn't have hired you otherwise. Okay, so um, let's get to it. The first thing I wanted to talk to you about is our new goals that we established. So one of the things that we, the teachers had to do, and I've talked to you a little bit about this, is we are all perfectionists. I didn't know about this. Uh, I don't know if you knew about this already, but most teachers are perfectionists um, and we do like a certain amount of control. Um, but we had to really talk about what is our version of winning? What is our version of success? What are our goals that are realistic to set for ourselves? Because we have realized, as you have realized, that virtual learning is, is really a lot different from having all of our students in class with us right in front of our faces. And we can kind of decide what happens. We can correct immediately their behavior, um, especially some of their physical behavior that we're going to talk about here in a minute. So I'm going to tell you these goals that we've come up with. And there are three of them that are really important to us. One, one of our goals, or we know we'll be winning or successful if most of the students are attending the Google Meets. Number two, that most of the students are turning in assignments. And we're going to go into detail about what that looks like and means. And number three, and this is where you guys come in. This is going to be, this is the really tough one. And we're going to spend some time talking about it. Our third goal that we didn't realize we needed to define is that students take ownership and responsibility for their focus and learning. I think that one's always been there, but it's been highlighted with virtual. We're going to talk a lot about that. So let's go back to goal number one and see how you guys can help us and, um, and how we can team together and get this stuff figured out because you need to know some things since you're now a staff member. And I expect a lot of my staff members, so hang on to your hats. Here we go. Number one, students attending meets. Here is one of our common problems that we talked about that is really hard for us um, 
and again, remember, I talked about our controlling nature. Um, usually if you have a class in front of you and a kid, um, one of the students just gets up and walks off, you know, you can address that and say, oh gosh, you have to ask for permission to go because you're going to be missing some of the instruction. Now, remember that the way our schedules are set up, there's only 20 minutes of instruction, just 20. Well, no, 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 sorry. 30. We talked about that. Realistically, it's 30 minutes of um, live instruction from your teacher. That's it. In classes here, it's up to 50, 55 minutes that a teacher is right there live in front of them. We ask kids all the time, every year, for eons to be engaged with us for hour, an hour at a time, basically. So um, all we're asking when virtual is 30 minutes. And the teachers are having to really like adjust how they're doing things and teaching so that they can get it done in 30 minutes and it still be at the same expectation level as anyone that's brick and mortar here at school um, in the blended situation. So 30 minutes, but here's what's happening. We have kids that are um, getting up and walking off. We ask them, we encourage them to not to. But you can imagine if you're trying to have a family meeting or if you're trying to have a discussion or teach your child how, how to ride a bike or, or all of the things that you do in your very own household, because your parents, you, you, you know your kid better than anyone, um, and they just get up and walk off and say, oh, I've got to do something over here. I have to go put um, uh, the macaroni on the stove. Um, if they did that in the middle of your discussion with something that you feel like is really important for them to hear, imagine how you would handle that situation. So. Um, our teachers are trying really hard to come up with solutions, but we're lacking a little bit of control. So that's number one. I need you guys help. I need you guys to, um, I know not all of you can monitor your students point in time because you've got a lot going on. You're working yourself at home. I get that. That's really hard. We did that in the spring with our own children and it's very hard. Um, so I get it. But number two, if you see them getting up and wandering, Maybe ask them if they're supposed to be in their meet or or encourage them. You you can't go get a snack. Well, you can go to the bathroom. Of course, we do that here. But um, snacking, getting up and wandering, it's just 30 minutes. Wait until the end of the live instruction to go get your snack. If they can wait to go to the bathroom until after the live instruction, um, that'd be great. If they can just wait for 30 minutes to do any of the other things that they need to do. Chores need to be done outside of that time. And eating needs to be done outside of that time. Um, all of those things, taking care of their pets, um, babysitting their brothers and sisters needs to be done outside of that instructional 30 minutes. So that's one thing that we, we have defined as a goal is making sure that kids are there during the meets, paying attention and focusing the entire time. So we will need your help on that. Don't be surprised if that comes up at parent-teacher conferences. Number two, goal number two, students are turning in their assignments. All right. So Students turning in their assignments. This has been a tricky one. This was tricky in the spring. It's tricky here in the fall. It's weird because we as parents don't always understand the Google Classroom and how it works. And you say, I saw them working on it or I, um, they submitted it. I see right here it says submitted. Did you know, parents, listen, imagine yourself as a sixth grader too. Um, did you know you can submit a blank? assignment. You can do, you can answer two of the questions out of 10 and you can hit submit. And on your end, it looks like, well, they've done it. They submitted. But our expectations here at Old High are not low. They're actually really high. And um, you guys expect us to have that high expectation for your student. And so that's kind of one of the things we're dealing with as well is make sure that um, just because they say they've turned in the assignment, or you can see on Google Classroom that it says submitted, um, make sure you actually ask them to click on the assignment and take a look over the assignment and see if they've answered all the questions, see if they put in the effort for it. Because sometimes they're just clicking submit and there's, there's nothing done. So that's number one. Number two, with this goal of making sure students turn in um, most of their, or most students turn in all their assignments is, Late work. So 
we've got some kids um, that have gotten behind and it is really overwhelming once you have gotten behind. Um, kids are having to manage their own time. And we talked about that too. Like our virtual kids are going to come out really ahead in some respects over the blended kids because they're having to manage their own time. They're having to come up with their to-do list. Um, they have to make sure that they're focused and, and doing what they're supposed to do. And there's no one there standing over them all the time. So this is really different. And if they can gain these skills, they're going to be far better off. I think we should, someone out there should do a case study on it because I think if you follow these kids for several years, you can see some really big benefits to what um, we're asking them to do. And there's not really a way around it. They do have to do that because we do not have the control. So um, we want them to get the same education that they would get if they were here at the blended setting. So we are asking them to do work. We are committed to making sure it's not overwhelming and it isn't overwhelming as long as you keep up with the assignments as they are assigned and as they are due. So that being said, we've had some students that got really behind and then they have five or six and that is really overwhelming to the students if they get behind. So, um, one of the things we're going to try to do is, um, is really monitor those late assignments. So um, to alleviate that, we're going to put a little consequence in place. So here is the rule, and we're going to write this down and I'll send this out to you as well, but late assignments. Late assignments. If you do a late assignment, because of the system Google Classroom we're using, you have to email the teacher once you're, you've turned in the late assignment. Once you've turned in the late assignment, you have to email the teacher to let them know that you have resubmitted it or turned it in. Number two, if it is past one week from the due date, it will not be counted towards the grade, the final grade. It won't be counted in there. We appreciate um, the work and effort that they went to, but at some point we have to put a little bit of a deadline. We want to make sure that they get the time to do it, um, but we also need to make sure that the teachers have time to grade it, to know what their kids are able to do, what their kids are not able to do. That always guides our instruction. That's one of our um, best practices is to take what the kids are able to do and then plan our lessons based on that. But if we don't know what they are able and not able to do, then it makes it really hard to um to do this job in the best way possible. So we're gonna put a little deadline and boundary on that. One week is all we will allow for late work and then past that it will not count towards the final grade. Um, okay, and then let's talk about this as well. So one of the things we're finding with students um, is that they're not utilizing um, their independent work time. So I'm gonna show you Let's see if I can find it. I cannot. Okay, so each, sorry, I'm pulling this up. Um, your schedule is designed to where you have the live instruction, but then you also have the independent work time. And I'm gonna show you this example of a sixth grade schedule. Um, this sixth grade schedule is to where you have the Google Meet time and then the independent work time. We are truly, truly expecting the students to use that independent work time. This is not free time or snack time or walk the dog time, sorry. Um, this is independent work time. If they choose to go walk the dog or, or, or cook themselves a snack or go play a video game or what it is, then, then yes, they will be behind and maybe feel like they can't get things done. This is one of those things to where, you know, at school all day, like we have kids here at Blended right now and they are busy doing the work, they get the lesson and then they get the work time to do that lesson. Same expectation for virtual here. Um, we would never, never do a disservice to you guys and uh, lower the bar or the expectation for your kids because we know that you want the same things we do and we want that high expectation for our kids no matter what. So make sure that they are using that independent work time um, to do the assignments because it could be very, very easy for students to, 
to get behind if they're not using their time well. Also, remember, a lot of you have um, you only have encore your encores once a week and you only have PE once a week, those times otherwise during the week, you can use those times for work time as well. Um, this is a, a bonus and a, and something that our blended kids don't have. You do have that extra time. Um, you can use those either to um, do your chores or, or cook or, or whatever it is that you guys need to get done during um, the day, or you can use those times as work times um, in addition to the independent work time. But that is how that system is set up. So we want to make sure that your kids are utilizing their time and that they are um, turning in those assignments on time. And the reason we want them on time is because we know that it can be very overwhelming for students if they get behind. So we just don't want to add that stress to your student. Um, and also, we want to make sure that we're um, maintaining those high expectations just like you'd want us to. Okay, number three, and this goes back to kind of everything that we have been talking about is students taking ownership and responsibility for their focus and their learning. So um, as a principal, I get to lead the building and I do that in all kinds of ways. I do that through just the building itself, the facility um, and how we operate and the different procedures. But I also do this through curriculum and I kind of love doing this through curriculum. If you ask around, this is my thing. So it's really important to me that um, students grow. It's really important to me that students grow and learn while they're here. Um, we like to do that in a very fun way. We like to do it in that multi-sensory hands-on learning experiences to increase depth of knowledge kind of way. That's what we're about. But at the same time, we can't have... Um, we can't lower our expectations for this depth of knowledge that we want our students to have. So last year, a lot of times you would hear out of my mouth with teachers as we meet in what we call PLCs, professional learning communities, you would talk, I would talk about, but do the, are the kids independently responsible for or and accountable for their own individual learning because we do a lot of group work and we do a lot of classroom discussions and then but I'm always pushing teachers are they being held individually accountable for their knowledge for the knowledge that they hold in in the blended it, it's it can be hit and miss because maybe they're drawing off the collective and maybe we're getting this picture of the collective and individually they don't really have a grasp. Well, here's what's happened in virtual is in virtual, we've taken that away. That collective has kind of been removed from us. So all we have is each kid is being individually accountable for their knowledge. And that can be really hard on the kids. That's really tough on the kids because that's not something that they're probably used to because we know that there's so much research and collaboration and we know there's so much benefit to classroom discussions and questioning and discussion techniques and we promote those and we encourage those and we do a lot of those in the brick and mortar. But as you can see with virtual, there's we've had this shift to where kids have become more accountable for their individual knowledge and learning. And it's hard. This is what's going to make them great. This is what they're going to get out of virtual learning that our, our blended kids might not get. So it's different. But we are going to ask them. We want them to, to self-correct. We want them to self-advocate for their own learning, saying, I'm going to focus for 30 minutes in this meeting. I'm going to make sure I use my independent time well. And they're going to need some help, guys, because we usually teach them organization here and we usually teach them some time management skills here. Um, but we only have 30 minutes for each content class. And that's so different for us. So what we need from you is to help them with that. Please Please help them understand that um, they are accountable for their own focus. They're accountable for their own learning. And I promise you they'll be better off for it. But you're going to see them struggle. So when I was a sixth grade teacher, not that long ago, okay, not that long ago, um, I was a teacher for 12 years um, here at Old High and at Barker Middle School as well. And then I was a literacy coach after that. Um, one of the things you saw on my board every single day is learning happens in the struggle. I want you to think about that. Learning happens in the struggle. 
if it's super easy and you already make 100% on it, is that something you already knew or is that something you're learning? Sometimes we're lucky. Sometimes we're just adept and, um, and we can just pick up things really easily. But a lot of times learning happens in the struggle. So when you're really having to think and you're really having to try hard, that's when you know learning is happening. Now, we never want to push over to that frustration level, right? We never want to push over into that, that give up um, moment. But please, parents, Oh, remember you are, I'm your boss now. You are part staff at Old High. So, so here's the deal. I, I'm the principal. And so let them struggle a little bit. Let them grapple with it. Let them fail every once in a while, right? Like let them fail. Let them get behind and see what that's like. Don't, don't always save them from it. Let them experience that awful feeling of being behind and how much work it takes to, to get caught up. Because I know most of us have been in that situation before and we learned from that mistake. And so now we put in systems and ways to keep ourselves from feeling that feeling again. So I encourage you to do that with your students um, or your children. Sorry, I switched boss parent mode there for you. But I do encourage you to do that. Now, I know what I'm asking is hard. I know I'm asking you to be something that maybe you never signed up for. Um, but we feel as a team that this is where we're going to be super successful is if we if we have you on our team, there's no way that we're not going to be successful. So again, our three goals and things that you might hear in parent teacher conferences this week. One, students attending meets the whole 30 minutes as much as they can. OK, focus. Students turning in assignments on time, making sure that those assignments, when you click on them, make sure that they're actually done, filled out, not turning in blank assignments, um, and that we don't have any late assignments. And if we do have a late assignment, please know that after a week, it won't count towards the grade. And then make sure they're utilizing their extra time that even our blended brick and mortar kids don't have. The PE, the Encore, the days they don't have PE, the days they don't have Encore, um, all of those times can be used and utilized for um, time to work on their assignments. Um, and the third goal, that students develop some ownership and take responsibility for their focus and learning. Guys, if we do this, if we do this right, your kids are going to benefit beyond measure. We don't even know what it's going to look like for them when they get into high school or even adulthood, because if they are able to gain these skills at this age, which is going to be difficult, but if they can do it with your help, oh, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. So again, thanks guys. It's been uh, five weeks. We've had some turbulence on this plane we're building in the air, but it's going so well. We're flying right. And um, we're about to tighten some, oh gosh, I don't know, plane terminology, sockets, wrench, I don't know. Um, but we're going to fix it. We're going to do so well. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. Okay. Hope you have great parent teacher conferences. If you need anything, as always, give me a call, 254-5440, um, or email me, L-L-Y-O-N-S at MintonvilleK12.org. All right, guys, thank you very much, and have a wonderful week.